Hi everyone, welcome to Fundamental of Chill Water System. This is a training course session that I will be conducting and uploading into this playlist. So in total, we have a nine chapter to cover. So for this today's video, we'll be covering the working principle of chill water system. So this will give you an overview of how different different components within a chill water system integrate and work with each other. So for this working principle of chill water system video, we have three things to cover. The first thing is the four major components of chill water system, mainly the chiller, cooling tower, pump, ASU and FCU. Second is the supportive system, where we have the makeup water tank, water treatment system, filtration system, and also the expansion tank. Then lastly, we will be covering also the additional system that can be added into a chill water system, which we have the condensate water recovery system, blow down treatment, and also the thermal energy storage tank, PES tank. All right. So since this is the first session, so I'll briefly introduce about myself. My name is Yu Changzhen. You can call me Yu. I'm a mechanical engineer in Malaysia. I specialize in heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, so HVAC. So I've been working as a project engineer in district cooling company, and also the uh, design and application engineer in a contracting company. I also have been a project and service manager, so managing the after sales service and also providing design and project management work. So now I'm running my own businesses in providing engineering and training services. So with that, we start our training session today. The first one it will be the four major component of chill water system. So we have chiller, cooling tower, pump, ASU, and FCU. So when we talk about chill water system, the first thing we will think about is chiller, because it is the main component, is the main driver, right? It's the heart of the system. So chiller is where the refrigeration cycle happens, right? It is happening within the chiller, the compression, expansion, condensation, and also the evaporation. It all happen inside the chiller. So chill water basically is a low temperature water, usually at around five to seven degrees Celsius. And chiller, we have many types. The specific type of chiller, how they work, we were covering in the specific chapter about chiller. So in the water cool system, chiller also produces condenser water. So condenser water is for heat rejection. Then that brings us to the second component, which is the cooling tower. So condenser water will go to the cooling tower, and cooling tower will use its fan to bring in the ambient air and cool down the condenser water. So cooling tower is the one that we can see located on the roof, the big unit. The third component is pump. Pump is necessary to move water around. Here we have two set of pump. One is the chill water pump. Another one is condenser water pump. All right. So the fourth component is ASU and FCU, air handling unit and fan coil unit. So these are the air conditioning unit that cool down the room air. They use chill water instead of refrigerant to cool down and dehumidify the air. Right, so these are the four major components. Now let's look at how these four components works together. We have the flow diagram. So we can see at the center we have the chiller. So this is the water cool type, and we have our pump here, chill water pump, and our condenser water pump. HUFCU here, so cooling tower is here. So chiller first will produce chill water. So this is chill water supply. So we'll go. Directly straight to the ASU and FCU, right? Each ASU FCU, the chill water will pass through their cooling coil. Then they will bring in the air, pass through the cooling coil to cool down the air. Then the chill water will return, right? So the supply usually is about six to seven degrees Celsius. Then the return is about twelve degrees Celsius. So if you're saying seven and twelve, there's a five degree temperature difference. So the chill water will return. And the pump will help the whole chill water circuit to circulate, right? So the chill water will go inside the evaporator of the chiller, right? Then they will come out and continue the cycle in a closed loop. So on the other side is the condenser water loop. So when the energy is bring back, the heat is bring back to the chiller. The chiller will perform its refrigeration process to transfer the heat from the chill water to the condenser water. 
So the condenser water will be heated up and when it leaves the chiller, it is about 35 degrees Celsius. Alright, then we go to the cooling tower. The cooling tower here will spray down. Then cooling tower will bring in the ambient air, cool down the condenser water. Then the condenser water will go back. The pump will push it in back to the chiller. So this condenser water supply to the chiller is about 30 degrees Celsius. So there's also another 5 degrees Celsius temperature difference here. So this is how the four component works, right? This is how chill water system basically works. Here I provide a few real life photo to let you have a better understanding of how each component look like in real life. So this is a chiller, this is water cool chiller. Here is a cooling tower, the big unit on the roof and pump is quite common. And here we, I separate into two different uh, photo. One is ASU, one is FCU. ASU is the bigger unit usually sit on the floor and maybe they are located inside a dedicated ASU room because they are big and noisy. FCU on the other hand will be hang above the ceiling. All right. So ASU and FCU basically their job is to absorb heat. Then the pump will move the heat to the chiller. The chiller will perform the refrigeration process to transfer the heat from chill water to condenser water. Then the condenser water will go to cooling tower and release the heat and they all continue the cycle to cool down the building. All right. So that's how the chill water system works. Now let's talk about the supportive system. No, other system that involve within the chill water system. Right. The four component is the main component that makes the cooling works. But now we need other system right, to keep the chill water system operational and also extend the lifespan of various components. So the first supportive system is about water replenishment. So cooling tower, when it cools down the condenser water, the condenser water actually evaporates, right? So due to evaporation, the water level will drop. That's why we need a makeup water tank to hold some water and automatically refill the water to the cooling tower there to re refill the condenser water. So when the cooling tower basin level drops to a certain level, this water will go in and fill up the water. So the second supportive element is about water quality. So within a piping system, we need to maintain a certain pH level, certain hardness. We don't want the chloride to have too much so that the system can perform at the best, right? So it's about water quality. So we call it the water treatment system, right? We can either use chemical, so we call it chemical water treatment or non-chemical. So for water quality, not so much on the chill water because chill water is in a closed loop. We only need to balance their pH level one time, then that's it. However, for condenser water, because condenser water is exposed to the outside weather, right at the cooling tower there. So it can bring in a lot of sand, dirt, and also the bacteria and viruses. So we need to have water treatment system mainly on the condenser water side. Another aspect about water quality is the filtration system. Over time, when water moves inside the pipe, it will pick up some dirt and some minor rust, right? So we need to separate all the dirt away to prevent it blocking the strainer and blocking the uh, damaging the chiller. Another function of filtration system is to separate air from the system. So if there's air present in the water, so heat transfer will be not so efficient. The third supportive system is water expansion. You see chill water when it's not running, it will be about room temperature, 24 or 26 degrees Celsius. When it start running, when the chiller start running, it will bring the temperature down to 7 degrees Celsius. So there's a big difference in the temperature. So we know that higher temperature, water will expand. So we need a expansion tank to act as a buffer to allow chill water to thermally expand. Another function of expansion tank is also to exert a certain amount of pressure. This is what we call the minimum system pressure. To keep air out of the system, when you have a slight positive pressure in your system, air can't go inside. And if there's any existing air, it will be pushed out through the air vent valve. So let's see these three supportive system, how they fit into the chill water system in this flow diagram. So the first thing we talk about is the makeup water tank. So it will be located here. 
to replenish the water to the cooling tower basin. The second one will be the water treatment system. This one will be located at the condenser supply line returned from the cooling tower, supply back to the chiller at this line. And this is what we call side stream. So you pull out from the same pipe and return back to the same pipe. Then you put some chemical here and return back to the chiller. The third one will be expansion tank. It will be located here at the suction side of the pump, our chill water return line here. Expansion tank also act as the pathway for us to fill up the chill water for the first time because this one is a closed loop so you need somewhere to put inside the water right so usually we done through expansion tank we just fill in water from here and the expansion tank got a diaphragm right they call the bladder tank and they have some pressure they will press against the chill water that's what we want to maintain a minimum pressure within the system all right so next one is about the additional system these are the system that not necessarily needed for the chill water system to function but it required due to specific standard and requirement right so we see the first one will be the condensate water recovery system so we know ASU and FCU will produce a lot of condensate water right as they dehumidify the air a lot of condensate water will be produced so this one can be recovered and stored inside an insulated tank and later we can use this condensate water for other purposes for example, we can clean the outdoor floor and also uh, water the plant and some gardening work. So second is a uh, blow down treatment. So in certain places, right, they have high environmental standard, right? Because the condenser water is chemically induced, right? Remember we talked about uh, water treatment to maintain water quality. Water treatment can only balance the pH, control the alkaline level, but Condenser water will have a lot of sand and some dirt particle. This particle can't be removed by the water treatment system. So over time, this hard particle will settle down within the cooling tower basin at the bottom there. So what we do is we periodically drain out this water, right? We drain it out, then we will completely remove all the sands. But the thing is, in certain districts, certain places, the, they have this environmental protection standard where they don't allow this chemically induced condenser water to directly discharge to public drain that's why we need to design a system to treat this blow down water this condenser water before we drain it to the public drain all right so the third system is thermal energy storage so basically this is a very big tank insulated and inside the tank a lot of glycol ball this glycol ball can store a lot of energy so basically we run the chiller during off peak hour off peak hour means when the electricity bill is not so high we run the chiller we charge up the energy inside this thermal energy storage tank then during peak hour when the electricity bill is higher we stop the chiller or run a few chiller only then we release the energy from the thermal energy storage tank so that way we can reduce our electricity costs basically reducing the operating costs so again we see how this system fit into the bigger picture so first is about this um, condensate water recovery system so it's very simple we just uh, centralize all the drain pipe into one tank and we just store inside this tank this tank will need to be insulated so the second one is the blow down treatment tank so usually we just drain this one down to the drain but if there's a need to treat the condenser water then we need to have a tank to store it first then we treat it or other means like filtration or how before we discharge it to a public drain all right so this big tank will be the thermal energy storage tank so the system works like this chill water supply we go here and when we open this valve means we want to charge the tank then the chill water will go inside the tank charge it up and then return back to the chiller so we want to release the energy we will run this pump this one run then we will pull the water from the return line go inside here 
pull it back and go to the chill water coil and return back to the chiller. So this system, both tank and chiller can run concurrently, depends on how we design the system and how we control the system. All right. So that is all for today's training session. It's about the working principle of chill water system. The next session we will talk about specifically on chiller, the basics, the type and also the chiller compressor. So I'll see you in the next video.